Welcome, welcome! It's Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you another Star Citizen video, and today we're talking about medium fighters. These are only medium fire fighters from the ship matrix. The ship matrix is wrong, but this is what we have to go on, uh, other than what we've seen in game. So let's take a look. As you can see on the ship matrix, everything that's listed as a medium fighter is either a Hornet, a Cutlass Black, a Scythe Glaive or the Santoki Eye. Those are the only things listed on the ship matrix that equate to a medium fighter. Now you could make an argument for the Aegis Saber, but it's not listed as a medium fighter, it's listed as a stealth fighter. I know, semantics. But we're just going off of what's based off of the ship matrix as bad and unupdated as it is. So. Now you can also see some of the weapons load out, so I'm not going to keep this page up. I'll have some gameplay going on in the background as we talk about each one of these ships. Um, as you'll notice, the Hornets, uh, they all have different loadouts from one another, which that's really the biggest difference other than like the, the Super Hornets are a little bit longer of a ship, and they have that extra turret on top. Uh, they're also a little bit uh, wider, which is kind of weird, but hey, they're a little, little bigger ships, a little tankier, have a little better armor as well, but uh, with the extra turret, and that, that's it. So other than that, I mean, it just comes down to loadouts. Uh, as you'll notice, the regular civilian Hornet differs from the military Hornet. And if you look at the Super Hornet, it has the same uh, systems as the military hornet. So it's about as close to the military hornet as you can get uh, if you get the super hornet. Now you should be able to get all these ships in the game with maybe the exception of the F7A, the, the military version. But again, the super hornet is that and more. Um, I think it's going to have better armor um, and it's it does have a similar loadout uh, the, the exception would probably be they, the military version has three or two panther repeaters. Uh, then it's also got two tarantulas under the chin and the two badger repeaters up top. Whereas the Super Hornet has bulldogs, which are a size smaller, and badgers, which are a size smaller, but they're gimbaled. So a little bit more of a fixed loadout on the Military Hornet and a gimbaled loadout on the Super Hornet. Um, really love this ship, but with the whole flight scheme and the auto gimbals and stuff, it's not as good of a ship as it should be. Um, so just keep that in mind, but it should be one of the premier fighters in the game. Uh, so also keep that in mind. I like the Super Hornet. I love it. Um, I honestly, I like the Heartseeker loadout more, but and that's a big but. It's mostly fixed, so the the fixed Heartseeker loadout makes things a little bit more difficult uh, to hit at this stage of the game. Um, now I am working on fixing up my. I guess my dead zones and my joysticks and lowering sensitivities to, so maybe that I can get more sh shots on target with fixed weapons, which will be a huge advantage if I can actually pull that off. And, and you know, a lot of pilots that are normal fixed pilots are flying with the auto gimbals now because it's so much easier. But you get so much more uh, damage per minute if you have fixed guns because you can go a size higher. So that's what I'm shooting for. Maybe I can get back into flying fixed. Uh, so moving on from the Hornets and Super Hornets, you can look at the stats page that, you know, it's somewhat correct for the Hornets right now. Uh, of course, it doesn't have, you know, like hit points and armor and all that, but uh, armor's not even in the game yet, so not really. So that's something a different story that we can talk about later. Uh, so we also have the Cutlass Black and the Cutlass Black Best in Show Edition. Same exact ship, just a different skin, different color. Um, 
Drake Interplanetary claims that the Cutlass Black is a low-cost, easy-to-maintain solution for local in-system militia units. The larger-than-average cargo hold, Rio seat, and dedicated tractor mount are, the company literature insists, for facilitating search and rescue operations. So this is a go-to ship for pirates, along with the Buccaneer, um, which the Buccaneer wasn't even in my other fighter list. I'll have to fi figure out why the Buccaneer's not in my list, but I'll go back and check that out. So the Cutlass is a little bit bigger than a Super Hornet. Um, it looks a lot bigger in-game, but according to the stats page, it's, it's only a few meters longer and a few meters wider, like four meters longer, four meters wider. But it is taller by almost four meters as well. And it weighs a lot more. Uh, it's got a much bigger mass, but it also has cargo capacity inside, which is always nice. Um, speed difference, it's a little bit slower than, than your Hornets. Um, and it's dedicated, I mean, it's, it's geared towards two people with that Rio seat. So that second seat could help, but it's also got a turret on top, which you would want somebody to man in combat. Um, that turret will have uh, two size three Panther repeaters in it, so it can actually put down some good fire with those size three repeaters. Uh, other than that, the Cutlass comes with four size two Badger repeaters, so it's, it's a repeater nightmare. <laughs> uh, it will really blast a lot of people with the repeaters. I believe you could actually make those size twos into size threes and go fixed, uh, but you know, in the current meta of the game, it's, it's not advisable. Uh, you do have a, a few missiles on this ship as well, and a tractor beam, which isn't, it hasn't been implemented in the game yet. But a big difference is, between it and maybe a Super Hornet is it comes with a medium power plant, two medium coolers, and a medium shield generator. So the medium shield generator can be a massive advantage. It will allow you to absorb a lot more uh, hits than the, the smaller shield generators. But of course, you know, the Super Hornet comes with two really good small genera uh, shield generators, probably the best small shield generators. So the Heart Seeker does. So that's something to, to keep in mind as well. Uh, those force wall shield generators are mighty nice, but the medium can still outdo small shield generators all day long. So Cutlass with the one medium shield generator has better, has more advantage when it comes to taking hits. Uh, armor on the Super Hornet, probably stronger than what on the Cutlass because, hey, it's Drake and they don't believe in overdoing anything. So if anything, they underdo it. You don't even have an ejection seat in any of the Drake ships, especially the Cutlass Black. So don't expect to eject in a fight. You're gonna have to fight till the end. All right, let's move on to the alien ships. And as you'll notice, uh, you have the Vandal Scythe and the Vandal Glaive. Uh, they're both medium fighters. They're very similar. The Glaive is more for uh, your, I guess, closer, if you want to call them aces, in the Vandal lore. So the better pilots, the ones with the more kills, or the, uh, I guess, the bigger prestige, will get the Glaives and other pilots will end up in, in sights or blades which are the light fighters we went over those um, they both come with these blades that will extend from the wingtips um, and you can use them when ramming and they could be quite effective they used to be in previous versions of the flight model now it's probably much harder to ram ships and use those blades and i'm not sure how much damage they do honestly in the newer version of the game here, the newer flight model. Um, they're going to rework both of these ships to make them, make them look better, kind of like they did the blade. The blade looks really good, and so I expect both of these ships to be redone and kind of looking similar to those. Now, one of the biggest or coolest things about both these ships are the two size five weapons that they have on the wingtips. For the scythe, they have two plasma cannons, 
for the glaive, it says a plasma cannon and a neutron cannon. Now, this used to be the other way around. And I think it's supposed to be the other way around, where the, the scythe has the neutron and the plasma, whereas the glaive has two plasma cannons. But they're size 5. They do a ton of damage if you can hit with them. Problem is, is they're fixed. So right now in the meta, again, fixed weapons, very hard to hit with. If you can figure out and adjust it, the flight model or the, uh, I guess, the sensitivity to where you can hit with those fixed weapons on a regular basis, they may do the damage that they're supposed to do but right now it's just really hard to hit with them and you're not going to do as much damage as you could have done several patches back they both also come with uh, two size one laser cannons um, they're pea shooters they do hardly anything very weak it would be nice if we could change those out into like one size two fixed or something I don't know, but they're they're underpowered to me. Obviously, if you're combining them with the size fives, you might be able to affect the shields a little bit. But really, your your big damage doers are going to be those size five guns. Um, and then you also have missiles. Now, on the scythe, it says it gets two size one or two pylons of size one uh, arrow missiles, and then you get four each pylon and then on the glaive you get size twos um, so it is what it is uh, they come with all stop shields which honestly the ships are weak right now you definitely want to upgrade the shields and the force walls it's just what it is uh, they're, they're just not strong ships at the moment which is a shame because I absolutely loved my glaive several patches ago. That was the ship I would fly in all the time, um, especially doing all my, my combat stuff. Just absolutely loved it. It was devastating getting those size fives on target, and uh, I really hope that they fix that and fix, fix how to fly and shoot fixed weapons a little easier. Um, again, I'm going to play with all that sensitivity stuff and see if I can't get that figured out. Hopefully, well, it might be just after 3.8. And uh, when it drops, then I'll, I'll probably work really hard on that. I may fool around with it a little bit in 3.7.2, where we're at right now. But 3.8 is right around the corner. And so last but not least is the Aopa Santoki I, which is from the Xion. Um, the Xion, it's a, it's, it's, so you have the Car 2 All, which was their Car 2 military ship converted to civilian use, stripped down a little bit, and then you have the Santoki I, which is like the medium fighter version. So uh, the write-up says, harnessing the power of the next generation Xion flight systems, upgraded dual vector thrusters, and daunting weapons package. Aopa has crafted a fighter that retains the nimble dexterity and tight handling the brand is known for, all with the added ability to pack a serious wallop when the situation calls for it. Welcome to the future of spaceflight, courtesy of the Xi'an Empire and Aopa. So this one's still in concept, it's not in game yet. Uh, honestly, it's about the size of a Hornet or Super Hornet. Uh, closer to the Super Hornet, probably. Um, but it's as tall as Cutlass. So it's, it's right in there, same size as all these. It's heavier than a Super Hornet. Uh, but not nearly as heavy, not even half the, the size as far as mass compared to the Cutlass. It's got very good speed. It's, it's supposed to be the fastest one out of all these ships that we've talked about. Um, and it's designated for one person. But I imagine there's going to be a way to get the second person on there. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait to find out when it's built. Uh, I will say that it's got... Uh, Four fuel intakes, which is at least two more than all the others, um, but they're small. And then main thrusters, of course, got four main thrusters. It doesn't really say anything about maneuvering thrusters, but it's supposed to be super maneuverable because those main thrusters are independent. Um, then we look at the systems. It's got two small power plants, two small coolers, and one medium shield generator, which is going to put this on par with the Cutlass and Shield. 
but much more maneuverable. Very interesting uh, systems. Again, that could all change before it launches, before it, it gets put in game. And then on the weaponry, uh, we've got four size three Xion laser repeaters. So it's those are probably gimbaled, but you know, yeah, I don't know, uh, you know, which means it could be four size four fixed, which could be really nasty. And then it's also got four size two uh, missile racks with two each on there, so it comes with uh, eight missile racks or eight missiles. So could be a pretty devastating ship. Um, I know it's uh, going to be an interesting ship. I can't wait to see it in game and to maybe fly on it, in it. Uh, but that's it for the medium uh, ship comparison, a medium fighter comparison right now. Uh, again, all this could change. There's definitely going to be more added to it eventually, and uh, the game will forever change. The ship matrix page is always wrong, but this is what we're going on for this comparison. So I hope you guys liked the video. Leave me a comment, leave me a like, subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in joining an org, uh, that information will be down below for you guys to, to go and check out. Uh, also, if you're new to the game, and this is a game that looks like it might be something fun for you to play, I'll leave a referral code down below. It helps you and me. Um, I'm Muddog with the Texas Space Navy. We'll see you out in the verse.